What is up guys, we are back here again with another Honkai Star Row video. Rather than the usual world videos, today we're going to be talking about why I skipped Jing Yue. That's right, I skipped him. And the reason I skipped him is for this hunk of meat right here, this husbando locha, this sexy motherfucker right here. The reason we skipped him is purely for aesthetic. I ain't even gonna lie, like the number one reason is just Lochar exists, right? And we know he's 1.1. Now, I'm going to tell you some more reasons why you might skip Jing Yuan or you, why you might be on the fence about him yourself right now. And that's because we have this beautiful lady right here, right? This is why we're skipping Jing Yuan. This is another reason why I'm skipping Jing Yuan. We have Soval carrying us. I'm highly invested into this character. Her voice actor is amazing. Her design is peak. I mean, I'm sorry, Jing Yuan. You just, you got all this competition to deal with, man. But nah, for real, another reason why you might be skipping 1.0's second banner and waiting for 1.1 is because we get two distinct characters in 1.1. One of them is the imaginary abundance path five-star Lo Cha, my boy. We just brought him up. Secondly is the four-star imaginary harmony character. Now, if you've been playing Honkai Star Rail since launch or just like maybe in the past week or two, one thing I think the whole community can agree on is Harmony characters are stupid. Like, supports in turn-based JRPGs are super important anyway, but having an imaginary four-star support, oh man, and Harmony? Harmony, man, I already know some of you Kong's freaking uh, skills. All I'm gonna say is attack buff, crit rate buff, crit damage buff, which is all in one character, by the way, and decent damage, de decent damage percentage, on her ult, that's all I'm gonna say. This is mainly a low char video. But another reason you might be skipping 1.0 is to go for a quantum character that isn't of the hunt path or of the erudition path, rather the nihility path. Silver Wolf is coming out in 1.1 as well. Again, we don't know the banners yet, but we know it's specifically these two five stars coming out in 1.1. And one will be quantum, one will be imaginary. Two rare elements I would say in the game, outside of Sela being the release five star, there's only one quantum character in the game, and there's literally one imaginary character in the game who, let's be honest, your access to him is gonna be very, very, very dependent on your luck. Whether you've pulled him in your beginner banner, whether you've pulled him in the basic banner, or you've lost a 50-50 already, or you get to your 300 pulls on the basic banner, there is literally a very low chance you will have yourself a welt right now, on average from player to player. On top of that, Lo Cha himself is an abundance character as well. Our only abundance choices right now are Natasha that we get for free and Bailu, which again, her chances of getting her are the exact same as Welt. So it doesn't really help, right? So for free to play players, Lo Cha's value is very, very high. But the main fact that the only two healers in the game right now are Natasha and Bailu, and preferably you'd like two healers for the second part of the Forgotten Hall Chambers. And secondly, just that imaginary element. It's really hard to acquire the imaginary element in the game right now. And if you're a meta person or you're just someone who likes to have one of each element in your game to cover all the weaknesses on certain bosses, literally it's good to go for him because even though he's a healer, he has decent attack. Right, now let's get into the nitty and gritty of his kit. Like most characters, Lochar has a basic attack that defaultly deals 50% of his attack to a single enemy. That's fine, we all know that. As for his skill, after using it, he immediately restores the target ally's HP equal to 40% of Lochar's attack plus 200. Now, that probably doesn't sound like a lot, but on top of that effect, he also gains a stack of Abyss Flower. What this does is when an ally's HP percentage becomes equal to or less than 50%, an effect equivalent to Lochar's skill will immediately be triggered by Lochar, and apply to this ally for one time without consuming any skill points as well, which is nice. And it can be triggered after two turns. So basically, you'll heal them for 40% of Lochar's attack plus 200, and then he'll gain a stack to use that again on the next ally that gets down to 50% or lower, which is pretty good. He's basically got two heals in one skill. So even though it might not sound like a lot, 40%, only 200, I mean, that's just at level one as well. You gotta remember, that is at level one. We haven't even leveled the skill yet. If I just put it to level 10, for example, at level 10, it's 60% of his attack and 800. And if you're a whale, <laughs> even though we're mainly talking about his value for free to play, if you're a whale, you can get this man 70% of his attack plus 1,025. Now again, 40% doesn't sound like a lot, but if we look at this man's base stats, his base attack is 102. That alone is actually, real for a healer, his base attack is pretty decent. And if, when we get him to 80, his basic attack is going to be 756. 
756 basic attack. That is ridiculous. I would say that's pretty good. And um, if we go over to his ult here, it removes one buff from all enemies, which is pretty cool. Let's say you're facing the Mara struck. He'll literally get rid of all their revives. How do I know this? Because I run Peeler, and Peeler's skill, which removes debuffs, gets rid of their revive as well. Their revive is actually a buff. If you guys didn't know that, for anyone who didn't know, the Mara Strux revive is a buff. So this is ultimately, that's just one example of a buff to get rid of on an enemy. Obviously, there's other buffs in the game that you can remove from enemies, but just as a one-off, like, top of my head example, the Mara Struck. He can get rid of all the Mara Strux while their revive skill. And while also doing that, he's going to deal imaginary damage equal to 120% of his attack to all enemies. Now, it's an AoE, so it's not going to do too much damage, but 120%? That's still, that's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of percentage. And on top of that, he gets a stack of Abyss Flower. So you can get a stack from his skill and a stack from his ult. So his ult can basically heal as well, technically, on the level of whatever his skill is at the time. And if you get his ult to level 10, it does 200%, which is, again, I think that's a pretty good percentage. Now, at this point in the video, you're probably thinking, okay, that's cool, but that's just like Natasha. It's still like heals that have to activate at certain points. Whereas Bailu can heal when you get attacked, which is really valuable. But check this, we go to the boy's talent. We go to the Husbando's talent. When his Abyss Flower stacks reach two, he's gonna consume all of those and deploy a field against the enemy. And when any enemy in the field is attacked by an ally, the attacking ally immediately restores HP equal to 12% of low charge attack plus 60. And this field effects last for two turns. And when he's knocked down or killed, whatever, the field will be dispelled. Now, remember this, 12%, right? Again, we give this talent to level 10. That is gonna heal for 18% plus 240. And again, it may not sound like a lot, I understand that. But when you add all these factors together, you're constantly gonna get a stack from the skill. And then there's gonna have an extra stack on top of that when you use the ult, which those can activate. And if you get two stacks, you're gonna activate the field. So this con it's consistent healing. Whether you believe it or not, it's consistent healing on paper, at least. This is all on paper. It sounds like consistent healing. Now, if you've gone through some of the story quests, you actually don't get to use him, but he joins your party as an NPC. And he was keeping my Don Hung alive. I ain't gonna lie. He was keeping Don Hung and Su Shang alive. But again, that's only a trial version. Obviously, once we have him built and whatever, we can probably do way more than what he was doing in that trial. But consistent healing is always a good thing. Again, he's a healer that we have guaranteed access to. Please keep that in mind when deciding whether to skip Jing Yuan and save or pull for Lao Cha. Again, only if you're a free-to-play player who cares more about resources and getting all your elements. Again, if you're if Jing Yan, Yuan is your favorite character in the game, pull for him. I will literally not tell you not to, like I pull for favorites. That's why I'm pulling for Lao Cha. This is just all extra shit. This is literally just all extra on top of why I'm pulling for him. This is like nice bonuses, you know what I'm saying? I'm going for him because he's a beautiful ass dude. But on top of that, I'm going to get all this cool little stuff added on, which is really, really nice. Now, if we go to his traces, this is the fun part, right? So these are always like traces. We're just going to talk about the milestone traces for when you ascend. So his first one is when the enemy in the field is attacked by an ally, all allies except the attacker restore HP equal to 7% of Lord Char's attack plus 93 so again, when he's got the filled up, the person who attacks is going to heal and then the, everyone else is going to get healed outside of the attacker for a little bit based on his trace, which is 7%, which is pretty good because again, it's of his attack, right? And remember what we said, his base attack can reach 756. If you build this man like a DPS, if you don't build him like a healer, none of his stuff is based on HP. If you build him like a DPS, he will be healing a lot because it's all based on his freaking attack and with him being imaginary, he will be able to help you break gauge, which is amazing because again, imaginary units, they're scarce. We're gonna get one that's a healer that can do damage. Yes, please, thank you. Thank you so much, I will take that. I don't know about you guys. His second trace is the chance to resist crowd control debuffs increases by 70%. That is incredibly good because if you aren't running a cleanse unit, then there's a chance he won't get debuffed, which is really good so he can keep doing his healing and you know, less chance of dying if he gets hit by a crowd control and just gets to stay alive and, you know, gets to keep healing you. But guess what? Here's the plot twist. Guess what his third trace is? When his skill is triggered, he removes one debuff from a target ally. So whoever you heal, he has a cleanse on it. Again, he's just like, he's like he's basically a five-star Natasha with that trace. 
which is really 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 valuable at this point in time if you're a meta person and you can't see the value on this character i don't know what you're doing i don't know who you're pulling for but hey man lochar is looking like an amazing character to just have on your account in general right now whether you like him or not now i wasn't going to get into adelons in this video because i was mainly talking about his benefits and his value to you if you are free to play and are not going for favorites or jing yuan just isn't one of your favorites and you're considering going for low char but for the wells out there we're going to get into his adelons real quick or just for the people who get super lucky and might get a second copy of him, right his first adelon while the field is active attack of all allies increases by 20 percent. that's really good i would say that's that's actually really good. most five stars in Genshin and in Star Row, I know it's always like the first or second constellations that are normally like the best ones. So I'm not surprised his first Adelon out the gate is ridiculous because that says all allies, which means it increases his attack too. And you want to heal based on his attack. Like this man is just, hey, I'm a healer, but I'm not. You know what I'm saying? I'm a healer, but I'm a, I might as well be an imaginary hunt that heals at this point. You know what I'm saying? Now he probably ain't going to be doing that much damage. You know what I'm saying? But his percentages are really good and him healing off of attack just you want to build probably going to build him like a dps you know at least a semi dps you know what i'm saying because you want him to have some sort of survivability so you might put in a little bit of hp maybe a little bit of defense somewhere in the sub stats but i know i'm definitely going to experiment and just go full on dps when he comes out i know that much his second adelon when using his skill if the target ally's hp is already lower than 50 percent lord charge outgoing healing increases by 30 percent and if the target ally's HP is at 50% or higher, the ally receives a shield instead that can absorb damage equal to low char, 80% of low char's attack, plus two 40 loss for two turns. This man gets a shield. This man gets a shield at Adelon 2. If you are a whale, all, see what I mean? What did I just say two minutes ago? The first two constellations always on some crazy shit and it just normally gets a crazy energy gold down. We're going to skip the stat buffs, uh, Adelon 4. When Lolchar's field is active, enemies become weakened and deal 12% less damage. That's freaking good. That is just, again, they're all good. They're all good so far. Uh, Edelon 6. When using ultimate, there is a 100% fixed chance to reduce all enemies, all type resistance by 20% for two turns. Again, just, he basically becomes uh, Nihility. So he's, he's an abundance with, who might as well be like a secret hunt or destruction on the side, right? Because he can heal, so I guess survivability is there. So he's like a destruction on the side because he's got good damage. And if you are a whale, or if you just get incredibly, incredibly lucky, like super duper lucky, your Lord Char could basically become semi nihility. This man is like a jack of all trades in one. If you if you whale, if you don't, even if you don't whale, he's still pretty. It's a healer that consistently heals and has damage and has a cleanse. Let's remember. Bailu does not have a cleanse. Please keep that in mind. If you are someone who's sitting there looking at their 300 pulls on the basic banner, like, oh my God, I'm going to get Bailu. If you're someone who's going to get her strictly for her value and you already own a Natasha, you are honestly, in my personal opinion, if you think differently, please let me know down below. You are better off waiting for Locha and running a Natasha and then Locha on your other team over a Bailu reason again for this is because there is plenty of electric characters in the game right now you don't necessarily need the extra electric character if you're already running a serval or if you're running jing yuan and you have plenty of gems left over and you're going for low char or you have plenty of gems left over because you skip sealer and you got jing yuan early and you're waiting for another five star unit and you only healer you have is natasha there is no point waiting for those 300 pulls especially because as a free-to-play player you're probably not even gonna get those 300 pulls until like a year into the game, right? Let's be honest. So in terms of strict value from a free to play standpoint, the rate of getting Bailu and the access to electric characters in the game, let's remember, so Val is free, right? Again, if you are going meta or just resource wise, you do not need Jing Yuan. So Val is free and she's the same class and the same element, both erudition, both electric, Bailu being hard to get, Arlen being available, available, right? Arlen is a character that does single target damage and then on his ult does single target damage with a little bit of AoE. Yes, he's a high risk, high reward character. He's not ranked high on too many tier lists, but trust me when I tell you Arlen is not a waste of your time either. You've got two electric DPS options, one for free, you do not need. You can want Jing Yuan, 100%. Pull for Jing Yuan if you want him. Again, I will reiterate this one more time. I'm not telling you not to pull for Jing Yuan if you freaking love Jing Yuan. Pull for your favorites. It's what I do. 
It's what I do, man. I'm pulling for Lil Cha because I freaking love him. I love Lil Cha. I loved him in the story. I love his design. I cannot wait for him to come out. I am ready for this man. But if you are not pulling for favorites, I would strongly recommend, and you do not want to buy loot. You do not want to buy loot. I would strongly recommend that you wait for Lil Cha in 1.1. Now, we don't know which banner Yukong's gonna be. Now, Yukong is crazy. If you guys want me to do a Yukong video, let me know. I might probably just do it anyway because I'm really interested in her and really excited for her too. And she a Kitsune, come on now. Um, but yeah, if you are not pulling for Jing Yuan, 100%, 100% get low char if you don't wanna buy loot and you are not pulling for Jing Yuan. There's no reason not to. There is literally no reason not to go for this man on your account if you are strictly looking for value from characters that you do not own. Again, imaginary, abundance with some nice damage, and a little bit in ability if you get lucky or you whale. This man is an amazing unit in my opinion. I know he's not out yet. Remember, this is all on paper. This is, I guess this would be theory crafting or whatever you want to call it. This is all on paper. This is technically just what's in my head. This is what I think. I could be wrong when he comes out. Who knows? He could be Bubu Gaga. But right now, from what I'm reading, this man is an incredible, incredible boon and asset to your account. Anyway, guys, that's all I wanted to talk about today. I probably will do a Yukong video as well going forward. Remember, we do have the live stream on the 26th of May this month, which will be letting us know exactly what banners are going to be coming. We'll know the phase for Lo Char, we'll know the phase for Silver Wolf, and we'll know which phase Yukong is attached to. Let us pray to the RN Jesus. I know I will be praying to RN Jesus that Yukong is on Lo Char's banner, because that will make my freaking day. A Harmony Imaginary and an Abundance Imaginary, that would make my day. I don't know about you guys. But anyway, thank you if you made it to this part of the video. I hope this helped you come to a decision on whether you're pulling for Jing Yuan or whether you're waiting for Lo Cha. Or even if you're going to skip him, maybe, and just wait for Silver Wolf. I don't know. Whatever. Hey, it's your account. At the end of the day, it's your decision. But thank you again for making it to this part of the video. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out and stay easy.